Hello everyone, let's go through this practice problem. Reading through the problem, we can see that there are a lot of steps going on, a lot of things happen before we actually get to the question. So let's go through what the question's asking step by step. First, we have two isolated conducting spheres labeled sphere 1 and sphere 2. They have equal charge, and the electrostatic force between them is F. So we can represent it like this. They have an equal charge, and there is some force F between them. This one on the left here would be negative. But then a third sphere, labeled sphere 3, is identical to the first two, but has a neutral charge, and is touched to sphere 1. And then in the third part, that, that sphere, sphere 3, is taken away from sphere 1, and is instead touched to sphere 2. Then sphere 3 is taken away, and now the electrostatic force between the first two spheres is something that we're now labeling as F prime. F prime. The problem asks us to find the ratio of F prime to the original force F. To hopefully make this less confusing, I'm going to kind of box off the separate parts so it's clear that they're separate. Now this problem probably seems pretty tricky because of the fact that there's kind of a lot going on as we can see, but fortunately everything is governed by a very simple concept. When we have a conductor, any electric charge it has is equally distributed across the body of the conductor. If we have two identical conductors and touch them together, then whatever their net charge, whatever their total net charge is, is spread equally throughout both of them. So if we were to take those two objects away, they will both have the same, they will each have the same amount of net charge as each other. They'll each have half of whatever their total charge together was. We can use that simple idea to go through this problem step by step and figure out how the force between the two spheres changes over time. Let's start with this first step. We're told that, charge, that spheres 1 and 2 have equal charges initially. So let's say that spheres 1 and 2 each have a charge of Q. Let's call it Q. This means that the electrostatic force between them, governed by Coulomb's law, which states that a force between two electrostatic objects is equal to the Coulomb constant multiplied by the product of the two charges, divided by the square of the distance between them, is how we can rep this is how we can represent the initial force in the at the very beginning of this problem. Since the charges are equal, we can more simply write this as kq squared, since q1 and q2 are the same. So let's keep this in our pocket for now, and remember this for later. Now let's take a look at the second part, when the neutral sphere 3 is touched to sphere 1. Now remember what we discussed earlier. If we're going to touch two conducting bodies together, then their total charge put together is spread equally throughout them. So if sphere 1 has a charge of Q, and sphere 3 has an initial charge of 0, then that means 1 and 3's total charge put together is just Q. So if that is going to be distributed between them equally, if, if a charge of Q is spread equally throughout spheres 1 and 3, then that means both of the spheres will each now have a charge of Q divided by 2, half of Q. And the charge on sphere 2 doesn't change because it's not involved in all this, so sphere 2 still has a charge of Q. Now let's move on to the next part, part C, where sphere 3 is then touched to sphere 2. Now at this point, sphere 1 has a charge of Q divided by 2, 
Q2 has an initial charge of Q, and, and sphere 3 has a charge, has an initial charge of half of Q. So the total charge between spheres 2 and 3 is equal to 3Q divided by 2. Going by the logic we established earlier, after we touch spheres 2 and 3 together, the charge in each of the two spheres is going to be half of that. So sphere 2 now has a charge of 3Q divided by 4, because we take the total and divide it in half. And the same goes for sphere 3. 3Q divided by 4. So by the time we reach the final stage, where we have the F prime forces, sphere 1 has a charge of Q divided by 2, and sphere 2 has a charge of 3Q divided by 4. Now let's use Coulomb's law again, and use these ratios we found for their charges. So going back to the Coulomb law, except this time using primes, this is equal to the Coulomb constant, of course, divided by the square of the distance between them, and this is multiplied by the product of their charges. So on charge 1, that's Q divided by 2, multiplied by the charge on sphere 2, which is 3Q divided by 4. Let's multiply these fractions together to simplify it a bit. So Q multiplied by 3Q, that becomes 3Q squared, all divided by 2 times 4, which is 8. So this is now our expression for f prime. But the problem is asking us to find the ratio of f prime to f. So f prime divided by f. So we established that our formula for f prime is k divided by r squared, multiplied by 3q squared divided by 8. And f, as we discussed earlier, is just kq squared divided by r squared. Oh god, hang on. Oh god, no q squared divided by r squared. Now let's simplify this a bit. The q squareds cancel out, the k's cancel out, the r squareds cancel out, and all we're left with is 3 over 8. Or alternatively, if you put it into if you want to put it in decimal form, 0 0.375. So either of these are valid answers because this is the value of the ratio of f prime to f. And that is the answer to this problem. And that is all for this video. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing, as that'll help me out in making more videos like this. And if you have a question about anything you're confused on, leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to help you out as best as I can. If you have a request for a future video, or you'd just like to hang out, links can be found in the description to my Discord server, my Twitch, and my other YouTube channels. But that's all for now, and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.